morning. Uh, sheep work this morning. So we've got the twin twin bearing ewes in. Uh, shearing next week, so we've got to all walk them home. Um, we're about 10k walk back to our home place where the shearing shed is. Uh, so we've got, we've got two mobs that need to go back there. So we've got the twins and then the single bearing ewes. Uh, what I'm doing is about, it's about 350 here uh, all together. So apologies for the wind, it's turned up again. Uh, yeah, so what, what I'm going to do, I've just got a, a green marker here. I'm just going to just gonna run along and um, rattle the back of them. Sit down, you idiots. Sit down. Barry down the back barracking. Uh, yeah, so then when we get them home, I can just run them through the draft and, um, yeah, draft them out again. So it's just going to... It's a little bit of time involved here, but it'll save, um, you know, two trips home. Um, to walk them home. It's going to uh, stand still. It's going to warm up again the next couple of days. Um, so yeah, we just I think it's back to I think we got 35 or six on Thursday, and then we're back to uh, 20. Back to 26 on. Oh, what's going on, big uh, Back to 26 on Friday. So we'll probably walk them home Friday. Or sit down, sit, sit, Baz. Probably walk them home on on Friday when it's a bit cooler or even Saturday morning. So anyway, we'll get to we'll get this done and uh, yeah, on to the next job. Wake up! Hang up. Back at the workshop, we've had a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. It's usually the uh, poison of choice. So yeah, just slowly sort of bolting bits back on this um, feeder house after we got it back on, uh, and yeah, just bolting a few of the sensors and that back on. What I'm going to do is I've got these um, new uni joints to go in. So I'll give you a bit of a crash course to see if I can. Set you up here and uh, yeah, show you show you how it works. So basically, they've got a got a circ clip that holds the caps in. Um, so yeah, we'll pop them out and um, hopefully it uh, it all works. Yeah. So a pair of fancy circ clip pliers. The trick is to get them out without getting hit in the face with them. But yeah, they just pop out. That's obviously one on each point. Where well, you can hear the wind blowing, it's got a bit ugly again with the wind. Anyway. Chuck some sunglasses on or safety glasses on.
you go, just like that. Yeah, you've got to be got to be a bit brutal to get them out, but we're not uh, we're not retaining. We're putting the new one in. used to change lots of these farmers would bring them in and, and get us to change them so PDO sharks and, um, yeah so it may look a bit brutal what I'm doing but it's uh, generally pretty standard practice get a punch to punch the old one out I want to do this nice and quick so it doesn't burn up too much of your time Now these ones, I don't know why, they're actually sealed, they're supposed to be sealed, well they are sealed, so whether you can see it, I've just got, you can see the, hopefully you can see the, the needles maybe, it's got little needle, ro needle rollers with grease, now these ones, these crosses are actually sealed, usually you can grease them, um, on a normal PDO shaft you can grease them, but for whatever reason on these you can't so now so we've got the new one and the new one's actually got just looking at him he's actually got a little you can see that bolt there where you could put a grease nipple so the trick is I'll get rid of that one Trick is getting it back in without getting it covered in dirt or losing needles out of the uh, yeah out of the the cones. So I generally start with the bigger end first, just a bit easier to handle actually. Before we're even oh no, we've got to put that one in first. Bear with me, it's been a while. So hopefully you can see this. Let me just put one in. And effectively, I just use the vice to wind them in. Um, you could use a press if you had a press. Well, we've got a press here. We could use a press. It's a bit of one of those deals where you've got to hold your mouth right a bit and wiggle your toe to get everything to happen properly. So yeah, I've just wound that, wound that right in. I've actually used a nut to get that in a bit deeper. And what I was trying not to do, I've done. Just got a bit of crap on that end of it. That's all right. Uh, yeah, and then put your other, other cone in. And what you can do is, the new circlips. Ah! Fuck. <laughs> have to bleep that out. The new circlips. Yeah, bag of bits. So I generally just put a circlip in the opposite side. If you had a nice clean bench, it'd be really helpful too, but I don't seem to be able to have one of them. So. Then again, I'll just use my nut. Little nut is a bit of a spacer. I can get it to work. that all right try and do the other one this is where it gets tricky where you've got to juggle both bits so again put that in we 
used to have special sort of jigs to, that made it a bit easier to handle. Um, when you were doing lots of them, sometimes the, the cups might, mightn't quite go in straight and you just got to change it up a little bit. This one's going to be relatively simple, hopefully. Touch wood, better not speak too soon. circle it in if I can find it in the packet. Circlips have just got a little little groove that they sit in. Give him a bit of a tap with a hammer. How easy is that? Uh, yeah, so I'll do them. Do the next one. I don't think you need to see that, but yeah. I don't know what's that taken. Probably ten minutes. Um, yeah, pretty simple. All right, we got this back together. Uh, yeah, it was uh, made a bit of a rookie error actually. Had these bolts in around the wrong way and when with the way the the yokes move when you spin it round the head of the the nuts were actually or the end of the bolts was actually hitting on here so I've had to pull them out and spin them around but of course I couldn't feed them in from this side with that already in um, so you yeah, had to let, let the feeder house down and then yeah slide that up out of the road and wiggle it around so anyway we got this so I've had that together <laughs> and apart a couple of times now, but I know for next time. I've just come down, I don't know whether you can see that with this camera, uh, to yeah, just set the water up. I'm going to water the uh, corn again tomorrow. It'll probably be its last watering. And yeah, there's a few sheep poking around here where they shouldn't be. So look, it's not, I'm not too stressed. I'll, um, if they wander around the banks a bit, they're not going to walk out in the rice with it full of water. Uh, but yeah, if they wander around the banks and have a bit of a pick and a bit of a clean up, it won't be the end of the world. So I'm not sort of too stressed. They've got, obviously got plenty to drink and there's plenty of shade here for them. So there is a couple of gates. Well, obviously they found their way. There is a gate open up up the top end uh, there of the rice. But um, yeah, if they just wander around the grass, the grass around the tracks and that's got a bit feral. So it won't be the end of the world. But we've actually got a corn maize field day uh, on in the morning. So we're going to, um, yeah, I'm just going to set the water up now and then probably actually go to the gym again in the morning. Um, but yeah, I'll, before I leave, I'll just open the door up at the top end here. But if I'll, I'll set the doors up and open the bay now for the first bay. And um, yeah, fingers crossed, it should all um, run in where it's got to. The other thing that has happened uh, as of what are we up to? I forget, as of uh, yesterday, I reckon, um, we can now get permits to burn, burn off, burn stubbles, which is just all going to a couple. It's sort of the earliest, um, the earliest I can remember. We're still, you know, mid-February, usually it's the 1st of March, so um, 
the air, there's sort of guys with bigger programs who sort of want to get going early. Um, but yeah, I got a bit of a shock. I actually went to town the Savo and I'll show you what I've got there in a, when I get back to the workshop. But yeah, it's all a big cloud of smoke and I thought, oh, look out, it's uh, we're gonna have to go to a fire, but uh, it's actually just a permit burn. So, but yeah, it's um, yeah, it is still warm enough, you know, it's low 30s, um, and yeah, they're talking. It's, I think they're going to run it by the fire danger index. So I think 20, once it's above 25, the fire da danger index, with a, which I've spoken about before at harvest time, just um, what that sort of code or whatever you want to call it that we work to. Um, yeah, so look, 25 is not, you know, wind's got to be, wind's got to be light and temperature's obviously not too too hot. But um, just messaging a matey before that's, Farms in Western Australia, and he's a couple of hours north of Perth, uh, and 48 degrees yesterday. That's that's proper hot. I think he the <laughs> photo he sent me on the WhatsApp group was um, or video, and I think it was yeah, 47 and a half on the back veranda, um, and that would be what are we? We're three hours. That'd be about half past two in the Arvo over there. So yeah, that's proper hot. So don't get that out here, thankfully. Anyway, we'll get this water set up. So what I ended up getting was a bit of hollow bar. So it's not quite uh, the shaft on the front of the header. I just wander over there quickly. It was, I think it's about, well it is, I don't think. Uh, it's three inches in diameter. So we'll have to put that in the lathe and machine a bit out of it to get that to slide on. We've got a bit, he, um, the guys in it, Cobham Farm Equipment, where we get this sort of stuff from. Um, Tim just had a bit of that on the vent, on the, on the rack. So um, that'll essentially be this bit here in the middle. Um, do that bit. So we'll, uh, yeah, get to actually my boring bar and he's all picked on my lathe about how I need to look after it well you, you you're probably right I do but it does have you've got to admit it does have plenty of character uh, and it is bloody hard to it used to be in the shearing shed before the shed was here so it was undercover but it's hard when you've got an open shed and the way the dust was howling the other day I could give it a clean up and it'll be covered in dust again tomorrow so yes I probably should get a cover for it um, but the plan is to enclose the shed in time. So anyway, so yeah, the trouble I've got is I've, I've busted the uh, carbot tip off in the boring bar. And I do have another one, do have more tips obviously, but I'm having trouble getting that little, it's got a little screw there that comes out that holds the tip in. So we'll, uh, I'll just say I have sprayed a bit of squirty stuff on it and I'll, um, I might put a bit more squirty stuff on it now and it might come undone hopefully, but yeah, it just doesn't doesn't want to play the game it probably needs a I think it's a it's a fun funny sort of uh, tamper proof screw the sort of star headed screw so it's yeah it's not ideal it probably just wants an Allen like a cap set Allen screw head putting in it um so yeah anyway a bit more header stuff a bit of sheep work this morning which is good um got this cornfield day tomorrow now I need to put my big boy, boy pants on. I'll get the light in the right spot. I need to put my big boy pants on as far as filming when there's other people around. So I'm still not super comfortable with it, uh, but tomorrow there could be a bit of good stuff. So I'll take the GoPro with me. Gonna have Tony and Brendan with me. They're anti-camera, so we'll, um, we might try and sneakily get them. They won't, they won't they're not watching. Um, but yeah, look, try and Try on this presenters and a bit of bit of sewing, planning gear and that sort of stuff. So I'll um I'll take the throw the GoPro with me in with me and um yeah try on if there's a bit of talking and that sort of stuff and to show you what we're doing. I'm not I'm not too sure. It's sort of double crop like a bit about double cropping and summer cropping corn in um, particular. Um, there is a rice field day coming up in two or three weeks, so we're going to intending on go to that. So that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed. Um, yeah, we can. Uh, we'll get a bit of footage of of this corn day tomorrow. So anyway, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Ta da!